that we're looking at is World War One timeline. World War One timeline app is an extremely detailed app for giving information regarding to all the key events of World War One. It has been produced in part by Dan Snow and a lot of the footage used is from British Pathé. There are many different facets to the app and banks of resources such as images, film, access to some of the propaganda posters of the time. However, what we're going to concentrate on today is looking primarily at the timeline itself. So we're going to tap here in the bottom left hand corner, bring up the timeline. The default view for the timeline is in one year windows. However, if we were to tap here at the top, we can actually change the time scale to a range of times all the way from the entire war or looking in extreme data detail on a day-to-day -day basis. When we view the timeline in any of the different time scales, the way it's presented is by previewing much of the information that is contained in these information cards. Some of the cards, as we can see, have got paper clips which indicate they have additional information attached to them, whereas some of them are simply text statements, some are quite long, other ones are quite short. So for example, if I was to tap on this top left hand corner, here we get sent through to some more detailed information. There's an image attached, as well as this icon in the top right hand corner, which indicates that we can now move through to the world map. So I'm just gonna tap on the icon. And this now takes us through to the interactive map, which is another key feature of this app. Um, what the map does, as we can see, is there's all these little markers on the map which indicate different events, different battles that occurred during World War I and we get the information about the event. And as we scroll down we can get some statistics about the battle, in this case, which again, from a student's point of view, if they were writing a report or analysing key battles, they could use this app in order to get the data required to back up their arguments. Where there are either photographs or propaganda posters within the timeline, if we tap on one of those, so we tap on this battlefield, we then get an enlarged version of the image, but we also get some background information at the bottom as a text box relating to the image. And if I tap again, we can enlarge the picture further. From a student's perspective, they can see in greater detail what the conditions were like during that battle. To then return to the timeline, we just tap anywhere on the screen other than the image to the main timeline. Now, as we scroll through, there's, as we can see, lots of information. But as well as still images and the text, there's also multimedia files embedded within the timeline. So for example, if I type on this piece of film, again, it brings us to the gallery and we get the, the text at the bottom as a synopsis for the film. If I now tap on play, we get some video footage of that battle. Another key feature of the app is the ability to bookmark information. So if I, for example, tap here on Western Front France, and then if I tap on the bookmark icon in the top right hand corner, followed by tapping on the bookmark in the left hand corner, we can see now that this event has been bookmarked by the fact that we've now got the red ribbon at the top of the information card and it also appears in my gallery here at the top. So if I now tap out of here, you can see that I have three pieces of information in different formats that now bookmark. So if I wish to return to those quickly at another time, I can identify them more easily within the app. Those are just some of the key features of World War One timeline.